Yes, uh, good morning, one and all. Bonjour. Uh, I'm looking for the uh, the <laughs> how to say good morning, Kirundi, for the uh, our Burundian uh, counterparts. And uh, I've said bonjour. So, DRC, you are covered. Uh, Ekaro, that's Yoruba, from my part of part of the world. Uh, Roger, you better listen to that. When you come to Nigeria, you come to Yoruba land, you are, I'm going to teach you some Yoruba. So, welcome. We are exceedingly happy to welcome our Vice Chancellors. Many of them are here uh, who are facilitating this course and others in the group, in the series. Uh, I can see the Vice Chancellor of National Open University of Nigeria there who delivered uh, a never to be forgotten lecture uh, sometime last week. Uh, I can see also the Vice Chancellor of the Taishulari University of Education, uh, whose lecture in uh, in e ACE 811911 uh, is uh, it keeps ringing, ringing all over the place. Uh, I've seen I'm seeing also oh our grandpa Pastor Briggs is also there. Uh, what a what a what a heavy day we have like we like we used to have. All of these people attend our lectures regarding regarding uh, regardless of uh, whether they are. In, uh, science or education or whatever. This is very heartwarming. We are deeply grateful to you all. Uh, I'm going to begin uh, with sharing my screen. Uh, yes, as you can see on my screen, we are with three of our three-month engagement. Uh, today is Tuesday, April 21st, 2020. And the course, of course, is AC. 813 for the master students, 913 for the PhD students, and the course title is the Cultural Techno Contextual Approach to STEM Education and Research. Uh, as we said, uh, 813 for masters, 913 for PhD. The difference is that the PhD people will be getting greater grounding, greater assignments than the master's uh, people. Uh, now, uh, today we have a very exciting title Role of Culture in Science, Teaching, and Learning. Now, uh, this morning on uh, CNN, I heard President Trump talk about making America great again or getting them back to work. Now, we have to make Africa great again. In a lecture, I presented a professor, uh, the Vice Chancellor of the National Open University of Nigeria, Professor Abdallah Obadamu, you know, was there at some point in Barcelona, uh, in our group, we, uh, I made a presentation, can Africa claim the 21st century? And I was very assertive, I was very confident in saying that Africa can claim the 21st century. You will recall that in my first lecture on uh, this course, uh, we were looking at the brief history of the development of science. Uh, we, we learned that Africa had a very early start very early start in science, but there was regression. Professor Arik Babu will be telling us about regression, and you will hear about it in uh, the statistics class. So Africa regressed, but this is the 21st century. Can Africa claim it? As I said, anywhere I go all over the world, I keep saying that the success of the 21st century will rest with Africa, and I will never, never uh, allow myself to be overwhelmed by what successes have been made in the West. So I was quite uh, uh, intrigued by what uh, Dr. Baika Ove said uh, yesterday in his presentation, Afrocentric questionnaire, Afrocentric questionnaire. I had a discussion with him this morning and I said, well, I think what we must do uh, is for him to lead a movement in developing, even if it is not Afrocentric, it can be culture-centric questionnaire. And then you can derive the Afro part out of it. As I kept mentioning, look at, no get two heads. Till tomorrow, like, like the wonderful lecture on uh, conducting online surveys that uh, Professor Sonny gave to us yesterday, we looked at Likat type skill. Likat, I mean, don't we have some Africans, don't we have the Aribabus boost of this world? And this is a challenge to Professor Aribabu. Can't we also develop a skill they will say the Aribabu skill. I'm telling you something. The West will resist you. Even your colleagues will be jealous of you. 
But over time, the world will come to realize that that is one way to go. Now, the CTC approach, it's, uh, we start developing it. Some local colleagues are not too happy. That's their headache. Some are trying it out. Look, the overall idea is for us all, everybody in this class, in, from Burundi to CDRC to Nigeria to everywhere, let us do our best in our little worlds to make notable impact in our law, education, whatever, whatever. Now, I told you about Lev Vygotsky. Lev Vygotsky that we are all happy about today. Lived only 37. We learned that last week. Now, Lev, Lev, Lev Vygotsky, nobody knew about it until after he had died. So don't worry, ladies and gentlemen. Don't worry if what you invent or describe today, nobody's listening to you. Don't worry. Because tomorrow, ah, they will come back. I'm still going to go along the path of, of uh, history of development of science with you. I begin to see that some great scientists, when they made an invention, nobody, oh, they just laugh at them. No, this will work. And they had to come back to it. Marie Curie and the husband, the Marie Curie herself won two Nobel Pri Prizes in chemistry and in physics. When they started, oh, no, these are chemists, all these useless people. So what I'm saying here is that this group, this group of doctoral students, Professor Shabani has assembled the best in his university, uh, doctoral school, University of Burundi. And we are, in our own little way in Lasso, we are coming up with a group of doctoral students. So among us here, we must try to do the best we can in making Africa great again. We must claim the 21st century. We must tell the white man or the whoever it is, or whoever that, that is, that we are no slaves, that we also have heads of our own. We, we, we can do, we can do what we can do. I'm sure that tomorrow, when uh, Jomo Motegi is uh, sharing the ideas with you, he's based in the U.S. He's uh, an, an African American. You you go to hear this uh, from me. So that said, we'd like to go to our presenter for today. A wonderful man, a good friend, a good brother. It's uh, Professor Emeritus Professor Olubwe Miro uh, Jegede. Uh, he has a middle name which uh, he doesn't want you to know, but I'm going to let you know that today. Olubwe Miro J Jegede. Uh, his J is Johnson. Johnson, good man. <laughs> These are his uh, degrees. He's a professor of science education and professor of open and distance learning. Uh, is the immediate past secretary to the government of Kogi State of Nigeria. Is the immediate past secretary general, so CEO of the Association of African Universities. Is a national coordinator of national open and distance learning programs. Is a former vice chancellor of the National Open University of Nigeria. Now, uh, fortunately, uh, the, his, own, uh, his VC is there, and uh, I'm chairman of council. We are happy to have uh, three persons from now, you know, show up here. Vice President, Africa Region of International Council of Education of Teaching. Former President, now Global Ambassador of the African Council for Distance Education. Was awarded the best vice chancellor in Nigeria 2009 by the National Associ Association of Nigerian Students. African Leadership Star Award for Excellence in Tertiary Education. Globally renowned for his theory of collateral learning. Propounded in 1995, developed ODS systems in various parts of the world, Pro Chancellor, Littoral University, Port Novo, Republic of Benin, recipient of the International Council for Distance Education Prize of Excellence for lifelong contribution to the field. He's a consultant to global agencies, including AAU, EU, UNESCO, Commonwealth of Learning, World Bank, African Development Bank, and UNDP. Dear students, dear doctoral students, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to invite uh, Professor Lugwe Muru uh, to interact with us on the topic, which is, uh, excuse me, which is a role of culture in science teaching and learning. We have a panel which will have uh, different special, specialists. Uh, we will begin with uh, Professor Nimi Briggs. Uh, Professor Nimi Briggs, sir. You are going to yes, have, uh, we're going to have a short, maybe for about 15 minutes, uh, to uh, engage ourselves within the time. 
about culture. Uh -huh. what, what role does culture play in the teaching and well, learning of science? No, 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 not, not yet, sir. Uh, I'm going to identify the people who will speak, and then uh, we're going to have uh, three students and three, uh, three of the facilitators. We'll take somebody from Burundi, uh, who is going to be speaking from Burundi. Professor Shabani, can you name somebody? Okay, Professor Shabani, you speak for, for Burundi. Then uh, Professor Nimi Briggs and uh, uh, let's see now, Professor Nimi Briggs and for Nigeria, Professor Nimi Briggs and the Vice Chancellor of the National Point University, Professor Abdallah Adamu, Ibadamu, will take for Nigeria. And for Ghana, of course, we'll have uh, Fred. Fred, you're going to be speaking from Nigeria. Just about three minutes for each of us. You know, the role that culture plays in the teaching and learning of of science. So it will be in this order, uh, Nigeria, Professor Nimi Briggs, and, uh, okay, N Professor Nimi Briggs, Professor Abdullah Obadamu, and Kuli Oladejo, the three. For Burundi, it will be Professor Juma Shabani, and uh, uh, let's see, Professor Shabani, sir, can, can you name two of your of our students who will join you? Uh, sorry, can you unmute your microphone so that we we'll know that so that I can uh, list them? Maybe Emanuela, if she's around, because yeah, she's teaching uh, at the Pedagogy Institute. Oh, wow. That's good. Emanuela, yeah. are you around? Okay, if she's around, you'll come. Uh, or else somebody else, yes? And uh, in an environment, where the place where we were born, and um, we grow up in that environment. We get to know the culture of that environment, the type of clothing that are worn there, the type of food items that are eating, the way they greet. We grow up under that environment. Now, when we begin to have formal education, that formal education usually is reference to the environment in which we grow up. We want to see how that formal education enables us to interpret our own culture, our own environment. So if, whenever we are exposed to a form of teaching, we always relate it to that culture, to that environment from which we came. Correct. So if the teaching is able to explain certain enigmas in our environment, in our culture, we get very delighted, we get sure. very happy. Sure. And we can explain issues that have perplexed us in our own environment. So this is where the issue of culture comes in in our learning, be it in the arts, be it in the sciences. And can this culture of this, can this learning aspect be utilized to explain certain enigmas that we have found and been associated with in our culture? And that's where culture comes in very, very strongly in our studies, be it in science or in art. That's the contribution I would like to make. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so very much, uh, Professor Nimi Briggs. Uh, we will take the next person from Nigeria, and that is uh, the Vice Chancellor, National Open University of Nigeria, Professor Abdallah Ubadamu. You have the floor, sir, for two minutes. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, in my contribution, I, I always like to look at folklore and the way in which folklore yeah. uh, can contribute to our understanding of science. Good. I did some work some time ago in which I collected all the folklore in how the language. Yes that reflects science. For instance, there is a house saying that says, that is no matter how high something goes up, it's going to come down. Gravity. That's the law of gravity. Yeah. So if, if, if we can identify folklore or folk saying proverbs that have scientific content, then we'll be able to teach children that science is something that is around them. We don't have to rely on dead white scientists exactly. like Newton like Paraday, exactly. like uh, Marie Curie, yeah. in order to make sure that we understand our environment. Sure. And in New Lo Newton's law of gravity is something that exists in Yoruba, yes. Hausa, people, languages. So why do we have to keep driving and insisting that children have to cram these laws when they don't even understand them? They don't even have the language to understand them. So my, my suggestion is if we could look at our own individual folklore yes. uh, proverbs, then we can come up with Proverbs that have scientific content yes. in chemistry, biology, physics, uh, STEM, which will encourage our usage of those uh, 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 proverbs 
as part of our teaching in, in classroom. And that will make science more meaningful. Thank wonderful, you, wonderful. Thank you very much, sir, uh, Vice Chancellor of National Open University of Nigeria. Uh, I, I, he discussed this matter with me and uh, 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 two of us, along with Professor Ochenze, we are now hoping to start a project of uh, harvesting these folklores and extracting their science content and using it as basis to teach science to our students. Uh, folklores in Hausa, uh, he will be organizing, uh, getting, that to, uh, getting those together. In my own case, folklores in Yoruba. And Professor Ochenze, we folklores in Igbo. Professor Ochenze, we, are you game? Are you on for that? Yes, I'm sure she is. Okay, so thank you very much, Vice Chancellor. Now, thank you very much. Uh, I am. Yeah, very thank much. you very much. So, thank you very much, uh, Professor Nimi Briggs. We get on to uh, Oladejo. Oladejo, you have two minutes uh, to anchor the Nigerian submission. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I like, I, like I, I, I appreciate the support you have given to me. The role of culture in science, teaching, and learning. During these two minutes, I'd like to focus on, I, I want to add that education is the, the best, best trans, defined as the transmission and renewal of culture. If culture is our focus here, and it's about our way of life, I like to pick on the area of medicine. Culture, our culture is so enriched that we need not look too far away before we take care of our illness. For example, when I was growing up, I know very much well that sunflower is used to treating malaria. And I ask myself today, where are our students in biological sciences? After their graduation, they say they are looking for jobs. Why not come around and ask these old fathers to transmit this knowledge to us Let's look at how we're thinking of ourselves with our local leaves, our local herbs, and we'll start to, you know, refine this knowledge and make it more than. We'll go to the supermarket and we'll see one packet called chan chun chin cha. Nothing is inside, just leaves. And they say it's <laughs> dried. All of this we can put together and advance our own African medical science. And with that, we'll be speaking so much to the world. And it's all around us and we can do well with it. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so very much. Uh, it's all around us. Uh, we are uh, happy about the submissions from Nigeria through Professor Nimi Briggs, Professor Abdallah Uba Adamu, and uh, uh, Oladejo. Uh, we will get on to Ghana now, and uh, I'm going to ask uh, Fred Awa uh, to give us the perspectives from Ghana. Fred. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, the reasoning is that culture permit uh, permeates every fiber of human uh, society. And in the area of education, this is no exception. I would go straight to the humanities where I belong. For instance, I teach in the classrooms, I teach uh, bureaucracy. And then the features, one of the key features of bureaucracy is hierarchy or hierarchy. Now, to let the student understand hierarchy, you just do not situate it uh, within the context of the Ghanaian civil or public service. You let him know that in a home, and he can see it, in a home, the father is the senior most, followed by the mother, the firstborn, secondborn, and it trickles down like that. That is the concept of hierarchy that uh, Max Weber put together. He's dead and gone. So there must be Afrocentric reasons sent, uh, uh, explaining how hierarchy is, uh, is, is reflective in the public or civil service of Ghana, Nigeria, and any other African country. Now, for instance, I also teach politics in class as a part of the syllabus for public administration. Issues like of manifesto, criteria for uh, electing somebody in, in an, into an electoral office, they are an integral part of our cultural practices. Times back, if you were not whole-bodied, you could not be a chief. If you, if you were a thief, you could not be a chief. If you did not have children, <laughs> you could not be a chief. If you are a thief, oh, you can't be a chief. Uh, in Africa, you can you can steal so much and be president. <laughs> I'm joking. Please go on. Very good. Very good. Okay. Yeah. All right. So very all good. of these are reflective of the criteria for electing somebody into a public office. And before the coming of the white man into Africa, all of these systems were in place. So we can model all of our syllabus, be it in the social sciences or uh, humanities or any other uh, fiber of education to reflect the Afrocentric uh, issues that we inherited from our forefathers so that it makes understanding easy for students. Okay, your time is up. Your time is up. Your time is up. Your time is up. Thank you so very Thank much, you. Ghana. We appreciate your contribution to this discussion. Uh, 
we'll get on now to DRC. Uh, DRC, uh, I think we have uh, David, both David and Roger, I think, uh, uh, DRC. So, David or Roger, please take the floor. Yes, we are waiting for Roger. Thank you, Professor, for, for the flow. Uh, in our context, we see that uh, at when a child comes from his family, his society, his community, and he come, uh, he join the school, there are uh, two different cultures. Yes. From his family, and when he joined the school, he meet another culture. Sure. And the problem we get, it's in our context, teacher focus more on the culture of school <laughs> without integrating yeah. Yeah. the culture of the family That's or, or the society and the community. That's correct. And uh, and then we have to reflect uh, as teachers, as uh, researchers, of the role of culture in science, learning, and teaching by mixing both cultures, family, society, and school culture. If we, we, we succeed to, uh, to mix uh, both cultures, I think that we can succeed learning and teaching process because yeah. i want to well this is, th this is wonderful i can see that uh, many people are nodding uh, appreciating you because what you have said is that we are challenged with learning other science or law or whatever uh, that if we are able to bring in the culture of the family the culture of the society and the culture of the school together we are likely to achieve uh, huge success. So, David, I can see your hand is up. Please go ahead for DRC. You are presenting. Yeah, Professor, yes. I can I can complete the sentence from Mr. Roger. Okay. He forgot that when uh, the child come from home, he forgot that we have many cultures in DRC. Yes. Around uh, four hundred cultures, hmm. and if in the class we have around fifteen. Uh, children, how can we mix the culture from those <laughs> children and the curricula that we must finish? It's very complicated. So, I mean, uh, if we have the curricula, which is a program, it must end at the end of the year, we have to, to let the culture and to take all the set of cultures in case in one culture, which is DRC culture, which is uh, which can uh, can take all the cultures in one manner. I mean, that is uh, my contribution. Wonderful, DRC. Uh, I, I quite appreciate what David has just said, and I'm sure you others appreciate what he has said. That in the I class uh, we want, we have. Okay, look, look at this class for instance. We have 55 now. We normally have about 77 in the class. Uh, so if we have 77 people. Professor Abdallah Damo is coming with a different culture from home. Patel Asisi, different culture. Deborah Lua Shei Dairo coming for a different culture. And so all of us here. And Professor Chenze, we, I can see Professor Mike Faboro Day is also here. Uh, wonderful. Our uh, Professor Iduwola Inka with different cultures everywhere. So what David is saying from GRC is that uh, uh, we need to now find a way of harmonizing because you can't reach all of them out, uh, reach to all of them at the same time. So that is the that that's what that that is the contribution from DRC. We now move to we will now move to Burundi, and uh, I'm going to, uh, excuse me. Yeah, I'm going to Burundi now, and we're going to ask uh, Professor Shabani to lead, and then the other two people from uh, Burundi will uh, submit their contributions. Professor Shabani, you have the floor. Yes, thank you very much. Now, in the case of Burundi, first it is uh, uh, recognizing
says that uh, uh, culture is very important in the teaching and learning of uh, science and other uh, disciplines. So uh, the child, when he joins school, he will uh, uh, get his uh, uh, lectures and uh, the training in Kirundi for the first three years and using examples from the surrounding environment. Of course, here we have the first challenges. Everybody speaks Kirundi and we have only one culture. But the problem is that those who are living in the cities and the countryside is different because the kind of examples used are different. So this is the first challenge. The second one is that uh, after the first three years, when uh, teaching is in Kirundi, there is a move to French. So there is a transition which is not really very smooth because examples will change, the kind of uh, uh, methodology, pedagogy will change, and uh, it, there is no really coherence between what was uh, used as methods to, to, you know, regarding culture initially and uh, the one after that transition. We have actually a, a, a PhD student who is working on that. Yes. I can see him is in the room, yes. uh, uh, is he's working on that uh, issue. Now, the other uh, challenge we have is that teachers, in terms of pedagogy, they are not well prepared to, you know, to try to implement those uh, uh, training methods, taking into account the cultural situation. Uh, but uh, the doctoral school is, uh, is uh, putting up a program on, uh, on uh, uh, teaching and learning pedagogy from the university, but going down to help students to help teachers in secondary school. We have another new challenge, but we should face it. Burundi has now is now a member of the East African community, where the official language is... One minute English. more, one minute more. Yes, okay, yeah. yes, English and Kiswahili. And so now there is a process of harmonizing the curricula from primary school up to university. And we still have to cope with that challenge. Wonderful. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Juma Shabani from Burundi, and uh, may, may, may you then invite the other people, uh, your other students, to make their contribution. Can, can you ask? Yes, yes. Uh, Emanuela, she's around. Emanuela, are you uh, around? Okay, maybe another person. Yeah. Mani Rambona, or then uh, we take Wences last who is doing a PhD on that transition from Kirundi, from teaching in Kirundi to French. Wonderful. Yeah. So are you there? Okay, while we wait, yeah, while we wait for, uh, I will now open the floor uh, for uh, participants. I can see hands are up already. I can see the vice chancellor of the University of Ibadan has his hand, uh, has, has, uh, and the deputy central director, and our uh, dean is going to be a dean in a few months by God's special grace, Professor uh, Tunde Wolabi. I can see Professor Ochenze will raise their hand. So let's go in this order. We're going to take the vice chancellor of the University of Ibadan, Professor Duwola Inka, and then take Professor Wolabi and take Professor Ochenze with, and then we'll, 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 we'll get back. So, vice chancellor of the University of Ibadan, you have the floor, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, for giving me the opportunity to contribute to this uh, discourse. I think I agree with uh, all the contributions made by the eminent uh, scholars who have uh, spoken. I mean, like uh, about medicine and all that, we need to collaborate with the uh, scientists and all that. But one area that I find so interesting that is that uh, we need to, I think uh, one of our colleagues from Elasso talked yesterday about the uh, Afrocentric uh, Yes, question, yeah. yes. Uh, and, and I think uh, some of our, I mean, if now we're talking about culture, I, I mean, just like uh, Professor Briggs uh, mentioned, I mean, it's the way of life of people. You know, in a typical Yoruba or probably African setting, we are too superstitious. When someone dies, even at the age of 95, you say, who killed him? The wicked Not people. <laughs> the wicked people. I mean, this is that, you, you are going to talk, or we're going to ask you to talk. Okay, go ahead. I mean, I mean Professor Brink is here, he has spent all his life here researching to medicine and all that. Once I wonder, even if it's 95, you say, who killed him? <laughs> what was killed? So you don't see why you want to do autopsy, for example. When I say medical scientist, you say, let's do autopsy. Not so much as if you are going to bring that person to life, but to learn from it. I think we need to, I mean, the, I don't know, I mean, the, our, our mindset is too steep in superstition. So I think that's just my contribution. I also mentioned it in passing to 
professor Okubo, I think yes. the very first lecture that I had, uh, because it's anti science. Yes. To think that uh, people cannot die naturally, yes. but someone must have killed them. Of course. Yes, uh, somebody, 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 somebody's promotion is delayed. The belief is a stepmother that is behind it. Yes. You know, so it's so funny. <laughs> now, now, no, no, back to back to back to this thing. Uh, VC Ibadan sir. Now, uh, yes, sir. don't you think the wicked people are plenty too that can cause something? Are you are you throwing these things aside? Well, but you cannot marry it inside. You cannot marry it inside. Exactly. I'm just joking, sir. I'm just joking. So, uh, yes, Professor, thank you, yeah, thank you, sir. Professor uh, Tunde Wolabi, you have the floor. I want to start by saying that uh, we got it wrong from, from the beginning. Wonderful. I want to write it like that. From the beginning, the definition of science, known to the teachers, known to the students, they are purely academic. What is science about? Science is simply about exploration of the environment through interaction. If we get it from that perspective, then we know that environment is about culture and therefore science itself is more about culture in terms of african culture we have some beliefs sociocultural beliefs that negate the methods of science we have some that are in support of science like the one mentioned by professor abdallah what goes up must come down love that is example we have this interpretation in yoruba which says la la to loke ile lumbo so we need to articulate all these views and by the time we do that we also need to find a way like you have earlier said to collate the views and resolve through oh. what professor gegede mentioned as collateral learning bringing the two words the word of science word of life of science and the word of life of culture bringing it together and trying to resolve lastly i want to say this has serious implications. One, curricular implications. There is need for curricular review. And two, capacity building of our teachers. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Olabi. Uh, the uh, Professor Mike Faborode, the former Secretary General of AVCNU, uh, has raised his hand. He will come after Professor Chinzewi, who already has the floor. Professor Chinzewi, please take the floor. Thank you very much. I am excited about what we are talking about. I currently have a master's student who is working on what I called science in grandmother's kitchen. And the day he presented his proposal, a lot of my colleagues were saying, what exactly do you mean? Until the young man told them that what he wants to do is to look at some of the, the things our grandmothers would do in the kitchen and look at their science implications. And he came up with this one about if you're cooking, there's a, um, a delicacy in Igbo land or hasu. If you're making or hasu, you don't use the knife to cut the vegetable. That's our grandmother's belief. And you wait until you're about to put it into the soup and then you use your hand. And he now told them that when he now looked at it and investigated, he is about oxidation. Yeah. Once a metal touches the or hard leaf, it starts oxidizing and it's losing its food value. So people now relax. So he's collecting a lot of such <laughs> patterns yeah. that takes place our yeah. grandmothers do. They don't know the reasons. And by the time we we'll compile all this, it will be it will make an interesting way of teaching science to the children. They will now see that everyday things they do at home is all science. Just exactly. tell them the the scientific reasoning behind it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Chinzewi. That's exactly the point, uh, which is that everywhere we turn, uh, we have science, and then we must draw our students to the uh, to the realization that w whatever they're doing, they can draw up uh, some science uh, from it. And we are happy that uh, your student is of course with that so by the time we put our project together the folklore and science uh, in nigerian in, in nigerian context together uh, that would be a basis for uh, your takeoff at your, at, your, at your end professor michael faborode you have the floor sir professor michael faborode uh, thank you sir uh good morning everybody good yeah good morning, morning sir. Sir. 
I'm happy I'm coming after uh, Professor Zewis' uh, uh, deposition. Yeah. I, I think we've really missed this in Africa. Yes, when we When it comes to the issue of culture. Exactly. Now, you are covering uh, yourself, sir. You are covering yourself. We need to... Okay. Something is covering yeah, you. Aha, better, better, better. Yeah, yeah. I have a friend who said um, when uh, the Europeans came and then they colonized uh, us, they also did so the Indians. The Indians accepted their technology, rejected their culture, their language, their dressing sure. and everything. Sure. But we, we embraced all those things and uh, despised their technology and that's where we are today. Yeah. I, I think when you learn within the context of someone's culture, there's better understanding. Correct. I give an example for myself with uh, uh, some biblical uh, injunctions. I think in the Bible it says, when somebody slaps you on the right, you turn the left cheek. I mean, that could lose stupidity somehow. But <laughs> when you say the same thing in yeah. Yoruba language, yeah. it's very deep. It tells you. I mean, I will, I will quote myself. Fijare follow Rukiaku for what later on that is. Let's leave everything to God and all will be well. I think it's, it's, it's more meaningful and uh, it resonates better than saying if somebody slaps you on the left, turn the right, and so on and so forth. That's my own contribution. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so very much. Uh, getting back to class now, uh, there are quite a number of our students. By the way, we have uh, Professor Arik Babu, I'm going to call you in a minute. And uh, Mrs. Dairo, Deborah Dairo, I'm also going to call you. Now, we have uh, 88 students in our class from the following countries, from Nigeria, from Ghana, from Burundi, from DRC, uh, a few others from Cameroon. And uh, we have uh, facilitators here. Uh, we're having a session on um, culture and uh, science learning. Uh, what, what what happened was uh, I don't know what I said in the class already. Uh, since we couldn't get Professor Jogede waited for about 20, 15, 20 minutes, so we then decided to go in this direction. Okay. From now on, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is what we're going to be doing. If we miss a lecture, if the, le the facilitator is not on ground, then we then have a discussion among all of us on the on the topic. Is that a good idea? If it's, if it's a good idea, please can you clap for it? Yeah, that's good. Yes, Thank you. Sir. Right. So I will ask. Uh, Professor Arik Babu uh, uh, to oh yeah thank you uh, VC now uh, Professor Arik Babu to take the floor. We have seven more minutes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, well, uh, just to add mine to what others have said, um, I will just very very brief. Um, my inaugural lecture was titled "Beyond the Cuboid." Beyond the cuboid. Um, uh, we all know what cuboid is. That's just um, like a bus. Yes. But, um, when it's not of the same dimension, all through them, say it's a cuboid. Okay. And um, if you look at the shape of the classroom, the African classroom, it's the shape of a cuboid. Sure. And um, what I was saying there was um, teaching mathematics beyond the classroom. In other words, connecting what happens outside, what happens inside. And what, what we do most of the time is to teach mathematics in the classroom as if it is different from, from what the child or children, what, what they see in their everyday life. So what we are talking about in terms of culture and science, um, culture is generally the way of life of the people. Sure. And whatever science you say you are teaching, um, if you cannot have impact or you cannot have connection, with um, the environment and the, um, the way of, I mean, the, 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 the way of life in that particular locality or society, then there is nothing we are talking about. Definitely, this connection is what is missing uh, most of the time, and um, students tend to see science as something esoteric that they can hardly understand, and that's why even mathematics, for instance, we see that okay, we not understand even concepts that children are very familiar with. When you talk about the locus, you talk about the locus of the form. Um, um, for, for, for those of us that are Muslims. One minute you know, more, sir. One minute more. Mm -hmm. when, you, when, you buy, when, you, when you buy ram yes. for, 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 for the festival, and then you tie the ram to, to, to a tree or something, and the ram tries to, I mean, get out of that particular location, it will be moving 
in a particular part. And by the time you look you trace that part, it might give you what you call the locus of that. And that it might be circular if it goes around like that. So, so if we can link up some of these things with the children are familiar with in the room, with what happens in the, in the, in the classroom, it also it enhances their knowledge that they don't see science. They don't see science as so, something that actually will or maybe um, some, some set of people from the from the other world. One very much. Thank you very much. Uh, we are going to close with uh, with, with our students now. And uh, I'm going to ask, uh, let me see, I'm, ro I'm scrolling, just a minute. Uh, I'm, uh, one minute now. Yeah. Uh, I'm scrolling and trying to see uh, if any of our students who want to take the floor for uh, a minute. Oh, I can see Professor Anyolaja there, Professor Samson Anyolaja from Botswana. Professor Anyolaja from Botswana. Uh, I'm going to ask you to tell us how uh, the culture of Botswana, how uh, it is being used uh, in teaching science in Botswana. Michael, you are laughing or you are smiling already there. So let's have any two of our students, and then we're going to get uh, Professor Ayolaja from Botswana uh, to take the floor. So I'm um, scrolling. Is there any student? I can see Aladi Okin, yes. And uh, I want somebody uh, from another country, apart from Aladi Okin, is from Nigeria, one of our students. Uh, Mrs. Dairo, stand by too. Uh, who else? Ah, okay, Aladi Okin, take the floor. Uh, I'd like all our students to note that uh, when we present like this, to show that, you know, we keep saying that we are the best, we are the best doctoral students in the whole of Africa. So do your best to be contributing. To our discussion, not just uh, to uh, be, you know, to be to be looking. Uh, I can see Professor Jagede there. Wonderful, well done. But time is we have, we have used the time. We, we have a model now whereby uh, we, if the facilitator uh, doesn't show up for about till about twenty minutes into the time, we then you know convert into a discussion, which we have been enjoying since uh, uh, for a while. So, Aladi Okin, please take the floor. Thank you, sir. I'm grateful sir, for this opportunity. Just to corroborate what you and Gladys have been saying all along, in, in Africa, in your balance of technology, in those days, our forefathers have a way, where they have a way of making science for their son. And I believe this system is also used in animal and crop breeding. Correct. For example, if a man is to take a wife, they will trace the family line. Is there any body mass family? Good. Is there any incurable disease in the family? And so in teaching selection for breeding, maybe crop or animal, we still refer to all those things before we can select uh, a breeding stock. I believe that uh, we can use that system also in our culture to train or to teach our students about breeding. Thank you, sir. Oh, wonderful. That's uh, Aladi Oki, uh, a doctoral student from Nigeria. We're going to close uh, by asking uh, two people. Okay, let, let, let uh, uh, Mrs. Dairo take the floor. Mrs. Dairo, uh, well, take the floor. Just unmute your microphone and take the floor. Uh, if she's not ready right away, then uh, Professor Anyolaja, are you set there? Professor Anyolaja, are you set? Okay, it's not. Uh, Mrs. Dairo, are you set? Uh, I can see both of them are just uh, uh, silent. So let me thank you one and all. Let me uh, summarize what we have uh, what we have been able to do today. We have come to the conclusion that in learning science, like in learning anything. If you immerse the learner within the culture that that person has grown up in, then chances are very high that learning will be enhanced. And if you use examples from the environment, if you use the language of delivery to be close to the language that the learner is familiar with, then chances are high that uh, learning will take place. We also had examples of uh, 
like a lot of you gave to us, of some elements of our culture that are, can be explained by science. Uh, Professor Breeze gave examples, Professor, uh, uh, the Secretary General, Professor Mike Fabor, they gave examples, and several of our students from DRC, from Ghana, uh, 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 Mike, sorry, Fred, gave examples of how we can use culture to enhance learning. So we have all agreed, there's no dissenting voice at all, that in teaching science, or in teaching any subject for, for that matter, you must immerse the methodology within the culture of the learner. That being said, uh, because this course is on cultural techno contextual approach, and it, uh, it, uh, it, it uh, uh, incorporates all that we have said, the culture and the context, because the DRC people said, oh, we have 400. 400 different, let me just say, yeah, 400 different types of languages or cultures as it, as it labels it. And uh, the, the Roger talked about culture of the school, culture of the family, and culture of the society, all playing a role there. So we must learn to deploy all of these elements into the way we deliver our lessons. Uh, on that note, I would like to thank you all for attending. Tomorrow is another day. Tomorrow, we are going to be having the VC of Ibado. Uh, because the VC of Ibado is taking the floor, I will open the room at 9.29. No, before I open at 9, 9 uh, I open at 9.30. Tomorrow is going to be open at 9.29, so that we can all yeah. come quickly and, and enjoy that wonderful lecture that is going to give to us. Well done, well done. Thank you very much. So on that note, I'd like to thank you all again. And uh, yeah. I, I'm going to unmute everybody so that you give a round of applause to every, everybody give a round of applause to everybody. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. And I uh, wish you a very good time.